A very good morning to one and all present here. On behalf of Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science, Chennai, I, Zeba Samra, Assistant Professor of Psychology, School of Liberal Arts and Applied Sciences, would like to extend a very warm welcome to everybody who has joined us today for this webinar session on learning how to hack exams. In this session, you will learn how to score higher with smart working shortcuts, tips for last minute exam preparations, quick study planner schedules to set targets and achieve them, life hacks on how to deal with exam stress, procrastination, brain food, and much more. So let's get started. A future in excellence. Did you know that your textbooks are made up of various ingredients? Let's have a look at the recipe, shall we? Your textbook has various elements like examples, diagrams, detailed text, exercises, headings, subheadings, and many more. Let's put them all in. There you go. And of course, the main ingredient, which is the main concept and principle, the main juice of the textbook. Have a look at what happens one day before the exam. Oops, that looks like information overload. We tend to cram all the ingredients into our brain at once, which leads to information overload and reduces the brain's ability to recall the concept. There is a better way. By activating our brain filter, we can easily filter out the main concept from all other unwanted ingredients. And this is the secret used by all toppers to remember everything from the textbook during the exams. Come! Let's learn how to activate our brain filter, which will help us hack exams. Did you know that the span of attention for humans has come down to 8 seconds? and that of a goldfish is 9 seconds and that is why we find it difficult to focus on the textbook while studying. Signing in, I am Zeba Samra, Assistant Professor of Psychology, Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science, Chennai. There are three shortcuts to score higher. Let's learn how by using your environment, body parts, and smart work. In the first shortcut, environment, we will be checking out the following hacks. Organization, time, sources of information. In our second shortcut, we will learn how to use our body parts to sharpen our filter. Various hacks involving the ears, eyes, hands, and of course the brain will be dealt with 
here. Remember the last time you were at a wedding? Weddings are where people are excited and happy. Happy faces, yummy food, and a happy time with cousins. Our behavior is greatly influenced by the environment around us. If it is a happy environment, we are happy. Similarly, take a situation where we are at a funeral. The environment is sad and down. Nobody is happy and so we behave accordingly. Studying requires an environment where long hours of intense focus and attention are necessary, which can be a challenge given that our span of attention is less than that of a goldfish. The environment is a very powerful way of influencing our behavior. By altering our environment, we can alter our moods, our habits, and our life. Having a cluttered, unorganized study area makes it very difficult to find anything. Stay focused even for a few minutes and it is quite demotivating to sit in such an environment. So tell me, which table would you like to study in? Leave a comment in the chat box below. All of us would definitely pick table B, which is neat organized and inviting for a study session. Hack number one, organization. Step one, organizing the study environment. This makes everything clutter-free, structured, smart, and pleasant. It also makes it less stressful and very much more productive. Step 2. Organizing the study tools Our writing materials need to be kept in a separate holder or boxes. Stationary materials like sticky notes, pocket notes should be stacked up handy. Files and folders need to be labeled to hold all our notes, homeworks and question papers. A place for everything and everything in its place. A day before the exam, all you have to do is open the file and go through all the materials stress-free. Always keep a little box which holds all the important stationary materials. That way, we can avoid unnecessary movements and wastage of time and energy once you sit down to study. Organized stationery is always a good starter for a good study environment. Your exam pencil box needs to have three smooth writing pens, sharp pencil, a sharpener, an eraser, and a scale at all times. By keeping flowers on your study desk, the fragrant smell lightens the mood and triggers a pleasant feeling. It's all about feeling happy and motivated while studying. Remember, we lose attention fast. So keep things which motivate around you. A cup of hot coffee, chocolate or any other comfort food as a reward after completing a few pages will keep you going until the very end. Hack number two, timing the study. It is always very important to set a fixed time to get some academic work done because all of us have to be on social media, watch a movie or catch up with a friend for the rest of the day. By making a to-do list, our brain doesn't have to remember every little detail of the things that need to get done. Research says that writing a to-do list the evening before going to bed actually reduces the stress to remember the task and eventually writing it down helps us accomplish it. It's a clever hack used by toppers to list every topic or task that needs their immediate attention. They spend their time in leisure activities but have a to-do list which helps them stay focused and come back to the task. 
You don't have to write down everything or go scurrying around to get a to-do list. I have attached below a free template of to-do list which is ready for your use. Remember, each one of us are different. It is important to analyze when our personal energy levels are highest. Some of us like to study at night time and some of us are early morning birds. Tip: Our brain works best after it is well rested, even if it is a small power nap. So make sure you take power naps in between study time and plan the study schedule according to when the personal energy level feels highest. We may be good at few things and bad at others. It's important to know our strong and weak areas. It's okay if you feel that we lack in some areas or subjects. These weak areas need our extra time and efforts, nothing more. It's like tending to a wound. You have to be slow, careful and consistent. We might get irritated and give up, but slowly and steadily it heals. Nothing is more stressful than the feeling of having loads of potions to cover and absolutely no idea how to. Planning a timetable is like making an ultimate to-do list. It's okay if we are not able to stick 100% to the timetable. As we have seen before, writing it down breaks down the process. And it's important to be flexible and take spaced breaks. You can make your own timetable according to your syllabus and study time. As beginners, you can begin with the free to-do list template and slowly inculcate the habit of planning a timetable. Have a look at how time slots can be fixed for every task. If you find that writing down every task is a bit time consuming, then this weekly planner is just for you. You can note down the tasks of top priority alone and this can be followed up in detail by our to-do list. Trust research. This way our brain doesn't forget important things and has the space to indulge in leisure without the tension of missing out on something important. Always remember, whatever happens, happens for the good. Have a positive attitude towards learning. Be happy or at least tell yourself that you can do it. Positive self-talk can increase your motivation, self-confidence and self-esteem. Even if you are bad at something, try it the next time. Meet our old friend, procrastination or the phenomena of I'll do this tomorrow. The only problem is that tomorrow never comes and the repeat cycle continues. Research says that the best way to tackle procrastination is by doing the following things. By making a task list or to-do list and sticking to it until it gets sorted. Maintaining a journal planner. The mistake all of us tend to do is to focus on the end product that is completing the syllabus and that looks like a hectic task when we do that our motivation level goes down we feel lazy and want to put away the experience of going through all those boring textbook pages the solution is by focusing our attention on beginning the process by sharpening the pencil arranging the stationery or getting a cup of coffee to the table. All of this counts as beginning the process. You heard it right. Slow and steady wins the race. One of the proven ways to conquer procrastination is by using the Pomodoro technique. In this technique, we set a timer for 25 minutes. Once the clock starts ticking, we start studying. And as the 25 minute slot ends, we close the book and go away for a break. The technique is to have a start time and an end time while timing our breaks. That way, we get to focus on the task until the timer is up and then 
continue with our daydreaming after that. That's like shooting two birds with one stone. Pomodoro technique is a very effective method device to tackle lengthy subjects or topics. We break the attention span into short duration of 15 to 25 minutes and get as much done as possible without getting distracted. Even if we do get distracted, we can always time it as a break and get back right on track with the task. I have attached a free template of Pomodoro Planner which will be of immense help. Never underestimate the power of a well-rested brain. Cramming in the last moment due to the pressure to cover the syllabus is totally understandable. One thing which the toppers refrain from doing is overloading their brain. Try to plan your breaks. Do something you love to do. It can be taking a nap, a walk on the road, watering the plants, a visit to the terrace, a sip of coffee to just help you relax and get back on track. Making smart goals. How do you plan a movie night? You make use of S M A R T goals. Keeping it S for Specific, which theater with whom would you like to go? M for measurable, how much does the ticket cost? Huh? A for attainable, do I have that much money? Am I free that night? Relevant, do I want to watch a Chinese movie which I don't understand? Time based, which timing slot do I want to book? And voila. The plan is successful. Similarly, we need to plan for our academic goals, the same passion, interest and principle. There are various sources of information all around us. In order to be one step ahead in our preparations for the competitive exams, we need to know the various sources we can derive knowledge and information from. Primary sources of information include letters, speeches, and recording. Secondary sources of information include textbooks and online resources. Tertiary sources of information include bibliographies and index. Let's summarize the various sources for collecting information. Hack number three, reading. We need to have the necessary study materials with all the relevant information in it, be it from the textbook, guides, Xerox, or print copies of the subject. Equally important are the note-making materials like notebooks, sticky notes, dictionary, keep them all handy. Critical thinking is the main criteria for question paper setting in competitive exams and university exams. In simple words, critical thinking means thinking about thinking. The various ways critical thinking can be achieved is by Being open-minded is the key to critical thinking. It's necessary to understand what the author is trying to explain in the textbook but always be aware of your opinions on the matter too. Be aware of your own feelings and thoughts. The best way to think is by introspecting or looking within. Keep a tab on how you feel when you study. Try to build on the concept. That way you will connect with the material more faster. Being rational and mindful goes hand in hand with critical thinking 
By mindful, we mean learning to be in the present and enjoying the experience, like the dog in the picture. Critical reading is an essential element in all academic fields. It is the main purpose of formulating a textbook. We can indulge in critical reading by understanding and analyzing what we are reading. By creating an interest about the topic and thinking about it. By asking questions to ourselves and trying to interpret the answers, we activate the critical thinking bulb in our brain. The next big hack is the art of making notes. Your answer scripts need to have keywords in them. Paraphrasing is the technique of rewording the text in your own words. This helps us in understanding the concept and writing it down stores this image in the form of visual memory and tactic memory of holding the pen and writing the concept also helps us during the exam time to reproduce the same answer from the memory. Make sure to highlight the key words in the textbook. That way, your eye will catch the important concept and skip the other unimportant details, saving a lot of energy and time in the process. Let's have a look at the various reading strategies. Be selective of the material that you choose to study. Let it be of high quality. It can be a textbook, guide, printed material. It needs to contain all relevant information in it. Don't waste time with materials which confuse you or are not clear in conceptual explanations. Let's check out three important reading strategies which are used for speed reading. They are known as skimming, scanning and SQ3R. In the speed reading technique of scanning, we search for the key words. It comprises of less reading and more searching. The various steps involved in this technique include searching for the keywords alone, moving quickly over the page, locating specific details. It's the same thing which you do after coming out of an exam hall. You search for keywords from the question paper to locate answers in the textbook. Next is the technique of skimming or skim reading. Skimming is where we read the passage quickly to get a general idea of the topic without going into detailed or exhaustive reading. SQ3R stands for Survey, Query, Read, Recall, Review. By survey, we scan the text to identify the structure. By query, we question ourselves about each section. By read, we read the whole text quickly without stopping even at the difficult parts. By recall, we close the book and look back at the concept we understood. And finally, by review, we read important sections again, this time slowly. We take notes so that we can remember important information. Hack number 4. Writing We usually do this when our teacher asks us to highlight the important text. It's always necessary to find the keyword in the text and highlight it. Highlighting the keywords helps us in directing our attention and focusing on the important content in a glance. Like how I have highlighted the keywords in yellow on this slide.
The art of making notes is a very important topic. Making notes that are organized and well structured can help your brain take screenshots of the images and these images come back into vision during the time of exams. There are many types of notes like page by page notes, sticky notes. Wherever you write it, make sure you keep them safe. Techniques like stories, mnemonics and acronyms can be used while making notes. This makes the process of learning fun and easy to remember. Like how we use the term Vibgayar to recall the order of colors in a rainbow. Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. Or the way we remember the order of the planets with the terms my very elegant mother just showed us nine planets. The beginning of every word resembles the order of the planet. There are specific learning techniques which are a shortcut method to imprint the concept into the brain in a short duration with very less efforts. Spaced learning is where the learner equally spaces their learning time between breaks in days. Mass cramming, like I had shown in the demonstration video, tends to overload our brain with us being constantly distracted. This can have bad consequences in terms of memory, storage and understanding of the concept. At the end of the day, it serves no purpose at all. The technique of interleaving is connecting the new concept with old concepts which have been already learned. This strengthens our neural connections and makes our understanding solid. The technique of smooth repetition again strengthens our neural connections. It's important to rehearse the learned material to store it in the long-term memory library of our brains. Always create interest and pretend you are the concept that you are trying to learn. This will help you understand it better. Make use of flowcharts and mind maps as shown in the picture to study and learn concepts. This same concept would have been explained in 5 pages in your textbook. A mind map summarizes all the lessons into one compact flowchart and this is highly essential before the exams for revision. There are many ways of making notes, so don't limit yourself. There are flashcards, page-wise notes, sticky notes, etc. You can select any method of your choice or create your own innovative method of summarizing the concept in a crisp way. Cornell note making method is another method where a sheet of paper is divided into three halves. The top two columns are used to note down the cues, such as the main ideas, prompts, etc. And the other column is used for main lecture notes, which comprises of sentences, abbreviations, and symbols. A row below is used to write the summary. Such note-making techniques come handy during listening to lectures where difficult or lengthy topics are being taught. Keep your notes organized in files or transparent sheets. Divide them unit-wise and mark it with sticky notes. The whole textbook is divided into many units. And making notes concises the whole textbook into a few sheets of paper, which can be easily flipped before the exam. Absolutely no stress! Hack number 5. Revision be honest with yourself. Don't underestimate or overestimate your efforts. Always make sure to go through previous year's question papers or question banks. It is one of the best ways to revise, where your brain warms up to various questions and at the time of exam, it easily comes up with solutions as it has already done its homework. 
test anxiety is something which is very common and instant way to get rid of nervous feeling is by closing your eyes and inhaling a big deep breath hold it in for 3 seconds and then exhale through your mouth you can repeat this exercise even in the exam hall before the question paper arrives justify your physiological anxiety positively positive self talk leads to positive thoughts and relaxes you and this in turn makes you ready for the test especially when you are sweating or your heart rate increases tell yourself that you are excited and ready for this never tell yourself that you are afraid avoid negative self talk at any cost take 5 minutes break for every 20 minutes of revising Take a break. You can plan various activities for the break. You need to eat these super brain foods to recharge your brain during exams. Fish, oranges, coffee, berries, nuts. Chocolate, tea, broccoli, pumpkin seeds egg and turmeric remember to switch off the brain's thoughts before sleeping don't keep thinking too hard or too much and panic whatever happens happens for the good try not to use your phone before sleeping the blue light from the phone not only disrupts the secretion of melatonin the sleep hormone but it can also cause permanent damage to your eyes keep all electronic gadgets away from your bed and try to get a nice night's rest before the exam you have now learned how to become an exam hacker Let's quickly summarize all the things that we have learned in today's session. You learned the concept of brain filter through a live demonstration. Next, we learned the various hacks which fall under the environment, the body parts, and how we can use them smartly to activate our brain's attention filter. Congratulations you are now an exam hacker our best wishes for all your future examinations and endeavors Remember winners don't do different things they do things differently If you have any queries or seek more such videos do visit our website you can follow us on youtube facebook instagram and social media channels to keep updated with us let's move ahead to the question and answer session if you have any questions that you would like to ask you can drop it down in the chat box below so we have received three questions so far so let's see how i can help you out the first question is how to maintain health during exam time this is one of the most excellent questions because we tend to focus on completing the syllabus and we we don't tend to take care of our health so i'm going to give you three again i'm going to repeat the three tips that i shared with you number one is eating properly remember the slide where i shared all the 
brain brain foods the super brain foods yes exactly you take them in and your brain is never going to let go of you uh, you know it's never going to give up on you next is sleep it's important to get 8 hours of rest before you sit down for an exam i know staying up the whole night before the exam seems like a very nice idea but trust me our brain mechanism has been uh, organized in such a way that even if a small nap, you know, a small nap can do wonders for us. So remember to always take a little bit of nap, even if you're not able to have eight hours of sleep at a stretch. And the third one is phone. All of us have phones in our hands. And as you know, I have shared this tip with you where the blue light from the phone can disrupt the secretion of melatonin, the sleep hormone. Yes, we don't want to do that. Yes. And so these three tips are really important. Do keep it in your mind. Let's move ahead to the next question. The next question is, uh, what are the various few tips where we can reduce the stress? Yes, exactly. This is also a very valid question because uh, all of us are under extreme pressure, board exams and competitive exams. All of us want to be on the top level, right? So this session would have been extremely helpful to all of you on various, um, in various areas, right from the memory techniques, the various reading hacks, the various writing hacks, which I have shared with you, all of them are going to be of, uh, uh, really helpful for all of you. Yes, and reducing stress, we can, uh, we can actually, like I told you, we need to have power naps and these power naps are going to help us relax and meditation and you know the various tips I shared with you, like going on a walk, going to the terrace, getting yourself a cup of coffee, all of this is going to be uh, helpful to keep you stay calm and relaxed. Always make it a point to note down everything that you have to deal with. I have shared uh, these uh, planners with you, these study planners, weekly planners, to-do list, and Pomodoro technique. These are like research has told that you use this and you're good to go. Yes. So definitely make use of them. I have put the link in the chat box, download them and make use of them. Uh, and uh, let's move ahead to the last question. Yes. The revision technique. Yes, the exam is going to be like around like uh, this time tomorrow and you're like totally panicking. Don't do that. Remember what I kept telling you throughout the session, whatever happens, happens for the good. So be confident, eat right, sleep right, and you're going to be fine. Yes. So um, thank you all of you for joining me today. And We'll have the vote of thank addressed the thank addressed by Dr. Afros Fatima, head of admissions. On behalf of the School of Liberal Arts and Applied Science and the admission team, I, Dr. Afros Fari, would like to thank all the participants of this webinar. I would also like to express my heartfelt thanks to the Hindustan Group of Institutions Management for all their support in all our endeavors. I would also like to thank the Vice Chancellor and all my colleagues in the university. Last but not least, I would like to thank Ms. Eva Samra and the coordinators of this team, uh, the admission team, the media team, the design team, and those without whose support this event would not have been possible. Thank you all. Have a good day.